In this video, I'm gonna give you everything you need to upgrade the main board in your Ender 3 to the affordable and capable MKS Gen L. The Creality version of the Melzi mainboard found in the Ender 3 and some CR10s definitely doesn't have a good reputation. You have to remember on the Ender 3, however, that it's a budget 3D printer, so it makes sense to include a budget mainboard. The main problem, in my opinion, is that it doesn't come with a bootloader, which is going to put a big barrier in place to someone new to 3D printing, upgrading their firmware. It also has a really small microcontroller, approximately half the size of what you'd expect to find in a lot of other offerings. Now I've managed to get a BL Touch and filament runout sensor running on this board, but every time I've added something new, I've had to trim off something old. Surely there has to be a better way. And there is. This is the MKS Gen L. It's another budget 3D printer main board, but it's only going to set you back a little bit over US $20. Let's start this video by having a brief comparison and outlining exactly why you would upgrade to this board. Here are the two boards side by side, the old on the right and the new on the left. We can see the new one is quite a bit bigger, but let's get into some detail. If you've done any Ender 3 modding, you'll know it's quite hard to get everything to fit on the microcontroller, but the new board comes with a Mega 2560, and yes, that comes with a bootloader, so we don't need to worry about that step either. The MKS has five instead of four stepper motor driver outputs, and you can pick whichever ones you want. There's min and max end stop inputs instead of just min. There's an extra thermistor input and there's an extra four auxiliary or expansion ports. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an onboard SD card slot, but it does make up for that by having four server outputs compared to zero dedicated for the Melzi. But what does all this mean? Well, we can have more features on our Marlin firmware because it easily fits on the 2560. We can easily add extras such as BL Touch, filament runout detection, and advanced firmware features such as S-Curve and Linear Advance. This board has support for dual extrusion with the extra stepper motor driver, as well as the extra thermistor input. We have compatible touch screens, which you can buy off the shelf. You can upgrade your stepper motor drivers to the silent dynamic ones. In general, because we have more input output, we can have extra features such as quieter fans. After this upgrade, you'll be cutting down on noise because the hot end cooling fan won't come on until you're above 50 degrees. The only downside is it doesn't have an SD card on board, so unless you upgrade the LCD, you're gonna lose that functionality. There is a bit of a hassle in installation, but with this guide, I've tried to make it as straightforward as possible. Our first step is to print this replacement mainboard enclosure, but this video wasn't always gonna feature this. Let me explain. I started this upgrade process only planning to make a little adapter that went inside the factory metal casing. After measuring the old and new main boards, I put together my design for the adapter and I ended up going through a few iterations before I was completely happy with it. This version was designed to slip over the mounting bosses inside the metal cavity and then you use the existing screws to hold it in place. I actually finished shooting the whole video with this version of the mod, but then I decided it wasn't quite up to scratch partly because you had to bend the metal frame to have access to the USB slot, and the other main issue is that it was only suitable for an Ender 3 Pro instead of the normal Ender 3. It looked pretty neat, but I decided it was back to the drawing board. After a very late night, I developed this two-piece printable design. This part replaces the main board sheet metal housing on the Ender 3 or the Ender 3 Pro. The fan no blows over the stepper motor drivers, and it's got a hinging door on the underside that clips in place for easy access for adjustments. There's a Thingiverse link in the description and both parts print easily without the need for any support. It's a good test of your first layer to see how smooth you can get it. Now that we've got our printed parts ready to go, it's time to disassemble the old setup and prepare our new mainboard. You're going to start by removing all of the little bits of hot glue that stop the factory plugs from coming undone. After that, you're going to unplug everything one at a time and label them as you go with masking tape or something else so you know what's what when it comes time to put everything back together. Of course, a fair few of the components are already labeled X, Y, Z and E, so you won't need to worry about doing those. I've made up this handy diagram and I've put the link in the description. You should use it if you're unsure what the components are and you can use these to label everything. A lot of the plugs look exactly the same, so trust me, you're really going to want to do this. It's going to help you out a great deal later on. After everything's labeled and unplugged, it's time to remove the four short M3 screws that hold on the Melzi board. Now is the time to install your stepper motor drivers. You need to look at the labels underneath and match that up to the labels on top of the MKS board. I had the same A4988 stepper motor drivers lying around that came from the original board, but they were off another machine. 
I thought it was worth taking the time to measure the VREFs on the factory board and then set very similar values on the new stepper drivers going into the MKS board. Please remember that that wiring checklist is in the description and you can print it out and use it when you're disassembling and labeling all of your plugs. Now that we've got that out of the way, it's time to reinstall the new mainboard. The cutout for the wiring and the underside of the printer has some pretty sharp edges, so I found this foam tape and I applied it to all of those sharp edges. First thing we're going to do is slide our printed part into place. It attaches the exact same way as the factory part, which means two large bolts on the front of it and then one small bolt from the top going through to the extrusion reaching underneath the printer. We now mount the MKS board on the tabs provided using the factory short M3 screws. There's a slot provided in this printed housing for the USB cable to go inside for firmware updates or for printing from Octoprint. Now comes the straightforward job of plugging everything back in and I started with the main power supply wires. You have to be careful with these fittings that you have it open before you put it in, otherwise it can get caught in the underside of the fitting instead of the opening where it's actually meant to go. From this point almost everything is plug and play. So I inserted the bed heater wires, the hot end heater wires, the hot end cooling fan, the part cooling fan, the four stepper motor plugs, the bed thermistor and the hot end thermistor. The only plugs you need to modify in the whole thing is for the end stops. There's two locking prongs, we're going to mark and then cut off the left hand one. Pretty fiddly and easy to cut your finger, don't ask me how I know. After this easy modification, they'll plug straight into the end stop switches using the correct two pins of the three available. Here's the X and Y in place, but I've left Z free because I have a BL touch. There's a link to this image in the description, but your BL touch plugs directly in as follows. Here's an image of mine in place if you want to double check yours. Previously I've set up filament runout detection, here's the wiring for how I did it in my previous video with a picture for you to verify yours. I've chosen not to upgrade my LCD to one with an included SD card, therefore I'm going to lose that functionality for my install. If you do change yours, the four screws once loosened on the back will separate the LCD from the cover panel. If you're keeping the factory LCD like me, you need a second ribbon cable and you're going to match up expansion 1 and expansion 2 on the LCD and the mainboard. I utilized a little bit of electrical tape to tidy up some of my loose wiring. If you're worried I went too fast on all of that, well that's because I have this document that I've created linked in the description for you to print out side by side with the other one to make your wiring conversion as painless as possible. At this point you should take the printed lower lid and squeeze it so the two hinges pop into place on the ends. Make sure to feed through the LCD ribbon cables first and they'll have a nice little slot for their exit. The final component is the mainboard cooling fan. It slots into place and then plugs in in the very upper left hand corner. The plug matches perfectly. The lid is designed to stay closed without the screw but optionally if you want to put this in it goes in exactly like the factory one used to. Once again, go to the description, print out the checklist and take your time plugging everything back in. 90% of all of the plugs are direct plug and play. Now you will notice the fan is a little bit louder being on the front, but the good news is the MKS Gen L has a number of 5 volt outputs. Therefore, I took the opportunity to change to a 5 volt Noctua and that brought the volume back down the way it used to be. Finally, we have some pretty easy firmware changes that I'll take you through step by step. I'm basing mine on the vanilla Marlin that I'm running as covered in my previous videos. Most of these changes are made in configuration.h. We're going to start by searching for motherboard and changing it to board underscore MKS underscore gen underscore L. If you have a BL touch installed and you're using pin 27, you need to delete or comment out that line. I found I needed to invert the direction of all four stepper motors. Just change it from true to false or vice versa. This next bit only applies if you're retaining the factory LCD like me, but you're going to search for discount full graphic and uncomment the line to enable that. You're then going to search for CR10 and comment out CR10 stock display. To take advantage of the now on demand hot end cooling fan, we're going to switch to configuration advanced, search for E0 auto fan pin and change it from minus one to seven. You're now ready to upload. Make sure you change the board to mega 2560. If you're using TH3D, you'll be able to make very similar alterations, although some of the settings will be found in configuration underscore backend dot H instead of configuration dot H. That brings us to the end of the video, and this one has been highly requested. I've tried as hard as I can to make it as pain-free and easy for you to do this as possible. There's going to be a number of people rightly thinking that this upgrade is not for them. And if you're going to leave your printer mostly stock, I wouldn't do this. All I would do is burn a bootloader and update the firmware to enable some safety features. Consider this scenario. If you're about to fit a BL touch and you're about to order a pin 27 board, 
spend an equivalent amount of money on this MKS Gen L and upgrade that at the same time. You're gonna find future upgrades a lot, lot easier by doing this mod. This board is very affordable and also readily available. And there's lots of other options for add-ons such as a full color touchscreen. Please let me know in the description if this is something you're interested in or if you've done it already, how are you finding the change? I'll take this opportunity to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.